boys and girls, it's Colin back again. We're going to learn the story of the Good Samaritan today. A wonderful story in the Bible of love, of caring. And the Lord Jesus told us, before we learn the story, we're going to sing the Baba song. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go to see what's happening. I'm out here in Grand Canary, and as you walk around, you see lots of mountains, and lots of the Bible stories for me become very real and easy to imagine. And what I was thinking about today, whenever I think of the mountains and the winding path around the mountains for people to walk on, is the story of the Good Samaritan in, in Luke's Gospel. You can read this for yourself. It's a very common story for children, but it's got a very, very important lesson found therein within it and it's about a lawyer now the lawyer in the bible times wasn't a, a solicitor or a judge or someone who works in a court known as a lawyer today it was someone who knew the bible who uh, knew the law of moses or the law of god and he asked jesus he said to the lord jesus this very important question he said what must i do to have eternal life and that's a very interesting question. If somebody asked me that right away, you would point them the way to heaven. is only by being uh, saved and having your sins washed away. But the Lord Jesus, in his extreme wisdom, he knew the heart of this person. Whenever the lawyer asked the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Right away when Jesus heard the question, knew the heart, he said, what must I do? He was assuming this man was asking, do I need to actually do something? Because lots of people think they have to be good enough or they have to pay money to go to heaven. But the Bible refutes that and it's impossible to be good enough. The Bible says relying on being a good person or good works is like a filthy rotten rag or it's impossible a rich man the bible says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to inherit eternal life making it impossible for someone to buy a ticket to heaven but jesus then began to tell a parable a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning and he said there was a man and he was walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, on the road to Jericho. And he said on the road, he was attacked by robbers, thieves, who stole his money, who stole his clothes. Not only that, they beat him up and they almost left him for dead, about an inch short of killing him. He was just left for dead. And you can imagine, I've been out in these roads, on the heat of the day, it's dusty and it's very, very hot. And you would dehydrate very quickly and you would die. But then an amazing thing happened because a priest came and a priest would be a religious person. They are the person you would assume would show love and show compassion. But the Bible says, as Jesus told this parable, this priest never even crossed over to see the other man. He just walked straight past him. And I thought, that's amazing. It's shocking. And then just after the priest walked past him, shortly after that, a Levite 
he is a priest's assistant. He stopped and he might have looked at the man, but then he just walked past him as well. So both those religious people, they never paid any attention. They never even spoke to the man or hardly stopped. They just walked straight past him. So you can imagine the, the man who was the, who, who was the, who was a Samaritan. Now, Samaritan is a person known as a half-bred Jew, and they weren't liked by the Jewish people. In other words, they were despised. They were hated by these people. But well, whenever the man looked up, he was about to die, and he saw this Samaritan come, and he thought, oh, if a priest isn't going to help me, a religious man's not going to help me, there's no way this Samaritan, we don't even like these people. But to his shock and surprise, the man was traveling on a, on a donkey. He stopped, got off his donkey, he looked at the man. He immediately got wine and oil and began to look at his wounds because he was hurt really badly. The wine, of course, was to take away the pain in the wounds and, and the oil was to soothe. So in a double way, he was bringing comfort to this man. So this man, he put wine and, and, and oil on the man's body and he lifted him and put him on his donkey. He cleaned up his wounds and he assured him he was going to be with him and going to help him. And he took him all the way to an inn and he left him and he said, this man needs to rest. He needs to sleep. He's been really hurt badly and I'm going to pay you some money. He said, I have to go on a business trip. On my way back, I promise I will pay you whatever it costs you to keep this man until he's strong enough to be able to walk himself. That was a story told by the Lord Jesus. But then he turns to the man who was the lawyer and he says to the lawyer, which one of these men was the was his neighbor? Because when Jesus initially asked the man uh, about eternal life and Jesus said, what do you have to do? And he says, love the Lord your God with all your body, all your mind, all your soul and all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. And what he said was true because you should love God with all your body, mind, soul and all your heart. But then Jesus picked up on the neighbor part. He said, then, who then is your neighbor? And as he said, who's your neighbor? That's why he told this story. And he said, out of this man who was, who was beaten up badly, which one was the neighbor? And he said, the good person. He never had this lawyer was a Jew and he did not like the Samaritan people. He couldn't even say the word Samaritan. He said, the good man or the good person. And Jesus said, that's exactly right. You need to go and do likewise. And he realized this man was bitter. He was full of hatred in his heart towards the Samaritan people. And Jesus was making the point, this Samaritan, he never looked at the man and thought, is he a Jew? Is he a Gentile? Is he tall, small, male, female, old, young? He never looked at it in any way. And that's exactly the way God looks at people. He doesn't have discre discrepancies whenever he looks at people. He loves everyone exactly the same. And I thought there's a lesson there. Who then is your neighbor? That's why in the commandments, the commandments teach us we have to love the Lord our God with all our body, mind, our soul and love our neighbour as ourselves. I used to think your neighbour was the person who lived in the house next door, but it's not. The neighbour is the person you meet every day. It's the people in your classroom. It's your teachers, the people in your school bus, in your school who live around you. Everyone you meet is your neighbour and you have to love them as you love yourself. You have to treat them as you would like to be treated. You have to love them as God loves you. And I thought this was a lesson. The man asked the original question, what must I do to have eternal life? And it's not a thing that man could do because he'd hate within his heart. That's called sin. But it's not what he can do. It's what the Lord Jesus has already done. Because that's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why he died on the cross to take away the sin of the world. That's why at 12 o'clock the whole world became dark and all the sins of the world were poured upon the Lord Jesus and then he cried it is finished and we can be forgiven we can be saved today by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ what he has done on the cross is enough for our salvation the word eternal life means everlasting life it means what can I do to get to go to heaven to be with God forever and it's not a thing we can do by way of good works or being good enough because we can't be good enough and we can't pay our way so if there's nothing what we can do there's a, there is a way and that's what Jesus has already done and that's why Jesus said I am the way I am the door he says I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved he talks about Jesus said I am the bread of life if you follow me you'll never hunger so he talks so many times about the, being the bread of life being the water of life and Jesus the whole time was saying it's nothing you can do to go to heaven it's what I've already done that's why it's important all we have to do is believe uh, with our heart or all of our heart believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved 
saved. That, that's what he told the Philippian jailer when he asked Paul the question, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, you must believe in the Lord Jesus. And instantly he believed in the Lord Jesus and he was forgiven and saved. So that's a, a, a story about a journey, about a road, about two men having no compassion and one man having some compassion. The two men publicly are seen to be people who love people, but they never showed it on the road. And this other man who was despised by people, he showed love and he showed the heart of God there when he was out on the on, on the road. So sometimes we just do things to please people, but everything we should do, we should always aim to please God and do it with the right motive and the right intention and the right heart. Really good story of the good Samaritan, how he loved and cared and paid for that man and showed sympathy. And he, of course, was the good neighbour. Let's finish with the song, I'm Trusting You. <laughs> you God you are good thank you so much for watching today and enjoy the rest of your day